How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. I'm tired. I am tired today. Busy night last night, huh? That was a pay-per-view. I don't know if you guys know about this. Show called All Out. Live from the Now Arena in Chicago. You know what? Fantastic show. A lot of stuff I loved. A lot of stuff, uh, little, not my style. But we're going to talk about it. Uh, it, was, it was interesting. You know, this is a company in a very important period in the history of the company. A lot of moving parts here. We're going to get into it. I made a post on Friday afternoon of eating crow to the detractors out there. We'll talk about that also because there's an interesting part. Tony uh, revealed some things but didn't reveal a lot. Uh, maybe told a fib <laughs> during the scrum. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. But All Out Fallout is the theme of the show today. Man, that, that women's street fight, we'll talk about that. What a fantastic match. The betrayal of Brian Danielson by the BCC. I was surprised by that, actually. I didn't think that was happening. Wheeler Yuta plays a big part in this. What happens with him? Where does he align? That lights out match, ultra violent. It's not necessarily my style of wrestling, but in a blow off feud of this hatred these two have for each other, it was pretty appropriate. Also, a preview to all the wrestling coming up this week. We'll run down the card. I want to know what you guys think. Hit me up on X at Andrew Zarian. What was your favorite part? What part did you not like? Because it was very polarizing, that main event. While it was going on, a lot of conversations were happening, whether or not, you know, did people like it? Was it necessary? Was it too much? I think everything is, it's all a fair point here. Everybody had a very good point with that. When we come back, we're going to go right into the show. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live back on Sports Byline. Let's go into this. AEW All Out. You know, it's, it's almost like we had a pay-per-view two weeks ago, didn't we? Oh, yeah, we did. We did have a pay-per-view two weeks ago. And now we got another one. Tony said that this, this, the pre-sales for this were really good. I think a lot of it has to do with the momentum right now that they're feeling. Not necessarily seeing it on TV, but feeling. And that matters, too. Let's go into the Zero Hour. The Acclaimed defeated the Iron Savages, Boulder and Bronson, with jacked jacked jameson uh they came out we also got a cameo do you know who was there mg or pro my producer here do you know who showed up in this match? i had no clue who that was the costco guys <laughs> they gave it a boom rj rj city was fed up with those guys he was enough with the booms okay uh, for Me people too. who don't know who they are because a lot of people don't they are uh tiktok celebrities AJ was a former pro wrestler out of New Jersey. Big Justice is his son. And they go to Costco, and they do this whole Costco thing. They're the Costco guys. Remember that a couple months ago? Where the, where the this guys? Of course we do this. Where the that guys? My question, where the hell was the Rizzler? That's who I want to see. MG has no clue what I'm talking about. 90% of my audience has no clue what I'm talking about. I want the Rizzler in AEW. I want the Rizzler in that, in, that, in that main event. That's what I want to see. Uh, Ring of Honor, uh, obviously, Acclaimed won this. We got an ROH championship match. Uh, champion Sammy Guevara. I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my, my vision has deceived me. Ring of Honor tag team champions, Dustin Rhodes, Sammy Guevara, and Hologram defeated the premier athletes. You know, it's it, Dustin is interesting now. You know, like he has he has a double championship. There's a reason why he's in Ring of Honor. There's a little bit of a push for Ring of Honor talent, kind of. You know, Sammy Guevara's there now. They're, they're doing something here. I'm curious what it is. If they're evolving Ring of Honor a little bit, does Ring of Honor turn into a show with this new TV deal that's coming up? There's some emphasis now on this. We also got the Bang Bang Gang. Juice Robinson, Austin, and Colton Gunn defeated the Dark Order, which was Evil Uno, Alex Reynolds, and John Silver. Just a nice display match, you know, zero hour. 
Most of these were just to get yeah. people going. Yeah. Yeah, just get to get them going. Fired up. We also got Tony Schiavone welcoming Sky Blue to the stage. So she was in a cast, and it's her hometown, obviously, hometown favorite. She came out. You know, she got injured a while ago. It was a third year anniversary of her debut. Because remember, she debuted on the uh, the the Rampage show of the week we were there. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And you know, she she has a following. She definitely does. She started to say that she might come, she might be out for a little while longer, and then she was interrupted by Mariah May and uh, got beat up. Mariah says she's not doing her championship celebration in Chicago, and then attacked Sky Blue. Okay. I guess they're setting it up. Maybe she's okay. Queen yeah. Aminata came Queen out Aminata, for the save. Yeah. yeah. So I guess they're setting like up something with Sky Blue. Maybe they're elevating Queen Aminata a little bit. I'm sure that's going to be a match on this week's shows. I really like shows. It. I do. Who, Queen really Aminata? Like yeah, yeah. I yeah, yeah. You know, she mm -hmm. from the time that she debuted to now, that she has made these tweaks to her that come off really good on TV. We also got yeah. Undisputed Kingdom, Roderick Strong, Matt Taven, Mike Bennett. Defeating Shane Taylor, Lee Moriarty, and the Beast Mortos in action and Dreddy and Top Flight. Big match. There was a spot. There was a spot in this match that I I shook my head where Layla Gray is sitting on the apron and she's doing the uh, airplane uh, runway thing with the with the little lights. And I was like, okay, I don't yeah. know if I like that or not, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um. We we now you know the the, the zero hour, uh, it, it is what it is you know like it's to build it's, it's, it's to show. get people yeah. yeah on the show you know people want to be presented on the pay per view, and it, it's interesting because you have guys like the acclaimed, that can main event a TV show, were tag team champions were on the pay per view and now they're on zero hour and it's not really a a downgrade, no. Good way to put it. Good way. It's to put like it. they don't. It doesn't feel like a downgrade that they're on a pre-show. It's just like, okay, you know what? There was no room on this card, so this is how we're doing it. You had one, two, three, four, five matches. I'm being messaged right now well, while we're doing the show, four, and people are giving me four matches in a segment. In a segment, yes, in a segment. Four matches in a segment. Let's go into the main card here. Start off with MJF and Daniel Garcia. Before the match, they both were emphasizing that they want to break each other's necks. Uh, they beat the crap out of each other. I, you know, Daniel Garcia is a guy that needs wins on TV. I say this a lot about a, a few people here. They have some talent that people could get behind, but they keep losing and losing and losing. You know, like Takeshita up until now. He did, he did well in the G1. He's coming back fresh. He was in that match. They're continuing that program, I'm sure, with Okada. But he's a guy that has been on TV for a while. He came in really hot because he's impressive looking, which we'll talk about a little bit more. But he loses all the time. Daniel Garcia, he has a following. He loses all the time. The story was it ended with a low blow from MJF. After the match, Garcia was able to hit a pile driver for the sec from the second rope, uh, which he had intended on doing the whole show uh he tried it during the match and yeah. he finally got it and he finally so real got quick, it yeah so real real quick you talk about him not getting wins oh i got an alarm going off Jeez. uh he, i got you talk about him not getting wins um i thought that that's elevated him with that ending the way they ended this i felt like he maybe he lost the match but i felt like he got a leg up on mjf and elevated himself that way. I guess so. I, I, I yeah. You know, like I, I, know, I get I it. Know. I get why Wins they did it. Matter, but... it. It does it matter? Does it not matter? Does a presentation matter? You know, it, it's not a. It's not like a perfect science here. You don't have to win every match to co go over, and you don't have to lose every match to become a loser. Um, I, I get what they did, why they did it, but I, I want to see him. You know, maybe he should have been facing somebody else on pay per view. And getting a win before Max and losing. You know, like that's that's only me. That's my position because I want it. I think there's something special about Daniel Garcia, and obviously they see it too. You know what they, I think? They, I think they're going to run this back at Grand Slam. I think that's where they'll end up doing the, the blow off of this. 
They could. I mean, does that make sense? It makes sense to me. It seems like there needs to and be And Garcia match. wins. At, well, Max Garcia is going to lose in New York. goes over. Hey, heat. <laughs> you know, Max loses now in New York, the hometown. I mean, that's mm. silly, too. You could do, I mean, you could do something. We'll see. Uh, next match was the Young Bucks. They defeated Claudio and Wheeler Yuta to retain the AEW tag titles. This likely played into what happened later, which was interesting. Did you like this match? You know what? Honestly, I, I liked the story. I was hoping that Yuta and Claudio would win. Um, but I, this, I, this is one of those matches you could probably could have took off the show, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I get why they did it, but it, it didn't, it didn't really resonate. Actually, if you right. really look at this right. card, cause the card was a really big card. Um, mm -hmm. it, would this be the worst match on the main? Uh, not the worst. It just was there. You know, it wasn't bad at all. These guys are all work. Yeah. They're Claudio all great. Claudio was a stud in this thing. Yeah. Absolute monster. But yeah. Mm -hmm. I think cause everything had this aggressive feud feel to it this didn't have that feel this felt Correct. like a normal match and i think that was the only difference here when you look at this entire main card these are blood feuds top to bottom something big happened and this is the only one that something big did not happen in but it sets up something it set up something absolutely wrestling observer live here on sports byline we'll be back right after this Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline, covering all out from last night. I love a Saturday pay-per-view. You know why? I get to talk about it on Sunday. Normally, what's happening is I'm rushing through the show, and I'm doing a preview, and by the time you guys hear this, the show is happening. So I like when I, I, I was able to watch and, and think about what I'm going to talk about and have these detailed notes provided to me by my producer with a lot of misspellings. <laughs> Let's go into it. You Will, wouldn't like it any other way. <laughs> I wouldn't like it any other way. Will Ospreay. Now, this was fascinating. Will Ospreay defeated Pac to retain the AEW International title. This was, I, I would say this was the best Pac match I've ever seen. Obviously, we know Osprey's fantastic. He's had these amazing matches. Pack is un remarkable, unbelievable. These two connected so well. And you know, their styles work. Re their styles kind of really similar. work. They're very mm -hmm. similar. And, you know, the story was who's the better guy here? And it was a real competitive match. Um, you wrote down, this might be match of the year. I got to think about that. It possibly, it was, it was fantastic. Just, I, they just kept going. And when I didn't think they could turn it up a little more, they did. There were certain spots in there. There was a poison Rana, um, German suplex, uh, sequence on the apron. Yeah. The poison Rana on this, like, that was yeah, brutal. I, I, I was just like cringing the entire time. I did a lot of cringing last night. Yeah. <laughs> Put it that way. Well, you know, they, they, everybody worked hard. Right. They, 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 I, I think everybody realizes how important this is for these shows to be at this level, especially now. You know, you want everybody to go home happy you, that that old AEW. I mean, we were at all out mm -hmm. 2021, and that is probably the best pay-per-view or possibly the best show I've been to. As a complete package, and I've been to many pay-per-views, I've been to WrestleManias, I've been to NXTs. The, the feel of that building, you know, it, it was something very special. And they've been chasing that again. For years, they've been chasing that. You know, obviously, Last it's quite difficult when you, have, when you have a guy like CM Punk debuting in a match. It's quite difficult when Brian Danielson is debuting. It's quite difficult when you have Adam Cole showing up. You know, they didn't have any of that here, but they have all the pieces now to put together a fantastic show. Will Ospreay Pack, great show, great match. They did a weird backstage segment. Did you did you catch that with Ricochet? Oh, uh, one with Ricochet. Okay, yeah, where he so was watching the match. I, okay, Ricochet was watching the match. Okay, so they interview Osprey after the match, mm -hmm. and it's almost like the 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 
then you guys tell me if you caught this too. It was almost like they were both of them are cutting two separate promos and they never updated the new promo. <laughs> Will Ospreay's talking about like, why are you being such a jerk? You know, like essentially like turning on Ricochet. Ricochet didn't say anything to make him get aggressive with him, right? And yeah, and then he changed and he started just getting aggressive. It was, and then yeah, he started right, getting aggressive. Awkward. It was very awkward, like, and they were smiling. It's, I, I don't know if it was written. I don't know if the whole thing was ad-libbed. Um, I don't know if it was tongue-in-cheek. It was like they were... I don't know if it was tongue-in-cheek. They cheek. were trolling us, right? It just felt that way. Like, you know, they, they were like, oh, why are you, you're talking all this S? And he's like, I'm not, I'm talking, yeah, I am talking, but you weren't. <laughs> you showed up last week. You guys right. stared at each other. Uh, Osprey gets hit with a poison Rana, and then he's just sitting in the back and watching the match. And then he came over. I thought I found that to be awkward. I mean, obviously we know that they're going into this. Maybe that'll be the match at Grand Slam. Maybe that's the next pay per view. Ah, man, that'll be fantastic. That match. Maybe they'll do that match. spot again. I think they got to do that spot all over again. Oh, the Superman spot. The super yeah, the super. Spot? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That remember that spot killed bit killed the business. Remember that. Yes, that was the moment, guys. You, that. Yeah. that was the yeah. moment that killed the professional what we're doing wrestling right now industry. Is completely fa fake. We, that, this we, is a figment we of your really imagination. Doing this. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because the business is gone. <laughs> the business is over. That killed it. That that small move in 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 New Japan. Was it New Japan? I think it was. Right. I, they, they ran it back a couple of times. They did it in. I think they did it like WrestleMania weekend. A couple of the indie shows. Maybe ROH. I think, I think it was I an think... ROH show. Actually, was it? Mm. I could have sworn yeah, it was there. They did it more than once. And they did it in New Japan and they did it in the States. Yeah. Uh, I think in one of those uh, WrestleMania weekend shows. You know what's amazing? Uh, Prince Puma and uh, and what was his name on in Lucha Underground? Killshot? Killshot. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, to, I mean, it's, it is interesting how like the, the remnants of Lucha Underground is still happening. Yeah. So a lot of people that are there now. Yeah, that we're there. We're part of that. Penta, you know, just I, I think Lucha Gabbara. Underground. Lucha mm -hmm. Underground is a forgotten promotion. It came out a little too early. I think it was like a year too early. I don't know. I I enjoyed it. I mean, the the the, the spooky stuff was fascinating. It was done well. It was created as a TV show. I, I think a lot of people did not see it because of distribution issues, but. Uh, fascinating promotion at a really weird time in wrestling. Fascinating. Right on. Uh, let's see. What do we have next? Oh, Chris Statlander, Willow Nightingale in a Chicago street fight. They, this was fantastic. This really was good. The story was that I'm they hate each other. I was shaking my head. Yeah, so I Hathaway was shaking was my outside head. Like, how are they going to yeah. end? How are they going to, uh, uh, follow up that match that just happened and well they, they managed to get it they did they managed to, i mean they were in a tough spot they were in a really tough spot you had the mjf match daniel daniel garcia that was a really good match went into the young bucks claudio match that was a fine it was fine it was a good match and then it went into overdrive with will osprey and pack so this should have been the the cool down it was not but it was no it, it was not a cool down the crowd was so into this they they were essentially asked to follow the best match of the night and possibly arguably match of the year for that company for in many people's opinions. You know, I, I don't like doing that because it's, you know, it's subjective, you know, depending on what you like, depending on the talent that you're into, depending on it's, it's all subjective, guys. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. They put on a fantastic street fight, totally blew the expectation that I had for this match out of the water. Not that I had a bad expectation, but. They did everything you could imagine. Statlander at one point would powerbomb Willow through the Spanish announce table, but that table was high. Did you notice that? That <laughs> yes. was a really high table, and she had to and really... it just kind of dropped. <laughs> and it just... The whole thing just went... Pop. Uh, very good stuff. Um, <clears throat> Willow... Uh, Willow Nightingale... What did you write here? With tap? She tapped. She tapped oh. when... I'm when like, with tape? Started. I don't think there was a tape spot. 
<laughs> there was a fluorescent was tube spot. <laughs> there was a fluorescent yes. tube spot in this match. Uh, Will the Nightingale which, tap? Which totally caught me off guard. I don't know me about too. you. I was like, where'd that come from? Was I don't remember. Maybe they have had uh, light tubes in uh, AEW, but I don't know. Yeah, they have. Before. No, they've done it a couple times. They did mm -hmm. it during the... Um, I, 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 they did it during the Jericho and um, the oh, pizza yes. cutter spot. Uh, uh, they did yes. it during the Jericho um, match, yeah. and I think they Nick did it Gage. during one of those hardcore women's matches that they did during the pandemic. Okay. Wasn't there broken, broken glass everywhere? Could I think there was. Possibly, possibly one of those. Yeah. I don't know. The pandemic era, my brain is kind of mushed from that time frame of wrestling. All I see, <laughs> if I think about that era, all I see is screens of people's faces that I don't want to see. <laughs> that was an insane concept that they did. That Thunderdome? That was wacky. Yes. Really you, wacky. Why'd you have to bring it up, Andrew? Yeah. Move yeah. on. <laughs> uh, I, I know. You know what? I can't go back and watch any of that. Have you ever been able to? No. Uh, and even the really AEW shows. <laughs> even those AEW shows from yeah. that era. You know, it, it is something to be said. Like, that's a forgot. That will be a forgotten wrestling era you know 10 15 20 years well, from now people gotta go back to have people yeah at least try they tried and they had an open screen. air state they had an open air building too which was a positive but i mean to go back i mean they're gonna tell stories like oh yeah these guys wrestled for like months and months almost a year with no audience just no audience no it was basically a stage show a, basically a stage yep basically exactly a stage Ooh, that was a really good match uh, they both work very hard. Willa Nightingale and Chris Statlander. Two Long Island girls. Got to give them support. Love it. Okada. Takeshita. Mark Briscoe. Orange Cassidy. Continental title. Uh, Mark Briscoe was breeding. Breeding. <laughs> breathing. Uh, bleeding <laughs> really early on in this match. What was the spot? I, I, I kind of missed it. What made him start bleeding from the side of his head like that? It, it, it was continuing you know, to bleed throughout the entire match. Full disclosure, this was the match I got up to do some stuff. Okay. So I didn't catch a lot of this, so mm, my apologies. I, I, thought this was, I thought this was fantastic. I think the story here is Okada and Takeshita. They're going to continue this feud. Uh, Briscoe did a great job. Orange Cassidy did a great job. They teased you know them. Okada and Takeshita early on touching, and they got interrupted a few times. I really like this match. I, I want to see more of Okada, the, the Okada that we know. I think Takeshita is a great opponent for him. I hope they could do something more with him. Just great size, great presence. Both of them, Okada and Takeshita. They're big guys. Use them. Use them in that capacity. You don't get a chance with guys like this. You know, super hyper-talented, good size, good body, good look. When we come back, we're going to continue this. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Do me a favor. Hit me up on X at Andrew Zarian. My timeline is filled with dopey, dopey comments. Not from me. From the doubters. They doubt my report that Tony Khan signed the deal, or, or, or the deal is done, I should say. Or he did sign the deal. I don't know. We'll talk about it. Uh, <laughs> let's go into it. Uh, Mercedes Monet defeated Cheetah to retain the TBS title. The story was that Mercedes, um, that Mercedes could win without the help of Camille. Camille. It was a good match until the ending. That finisher, I'm not crazy about that. It takes a while to set up, right? And sometimes it's nailed really well. Like, sometimes it looks really good, but most of the time, it's a hard move to look good. If the camera's not perfectly positioned either, it really could make it look disastrous. Um, you, do you, you don't like that finish, right, MG? I, when she first did it, I was, well, this is doing different. And because I think it was supposed to be a version of a DDT, but it doesn't come off like that. It's almost like she just throws her aside and she just plops him down on the ground. And it, it doesn't look like it hurts. And I'm sorry, but I can't, I can't buy that as a finish if it doesn't look like it hurts. <laughs> so, yeah. 
and and yeah, and and it does take, and I think that led to that that clunky finish because they were trying to set it up, and she couldn't get her arm hooked at first, and yeah, it just it 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 just seems to be more um, refined, you yeah. know, on how you go into a finish. Yeah, I mean, listen, she, I, I would say modify it a little bit and do something else. I, I thought this was fine. I like Sheeta a lot. This is just another win for Mercedes uh, until she has a spoil. And I don't know who that spoil for her is going to be. It wasn't Britt Baker. It wasn't Sheeta. Who's next? It's an interesting question because I'm yeah. trying to rack my brain. You know, maybe like a Tay Conte coming back? Someone I don't like know. that, maybe? I don't know. I don't think, mm-hmm. I don't think, uh, with Ty I mean, they're, they're going to put people in. They're going to put people in front of her. I think is the is what they're going to do. And I think that's fine. So. But it's who's going to be the spoil mm. in the end? Maybe it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. Camille. Maybe she she turns. I don't know. We'll see. I want to see more of her because she's fantastic. AEW World Champion. So this was the main event of the show, technically. Correct. Brian Danielson defeated Your TNT champion event. Jack Perry to retain the AEW World Title. This was a great match. Uh, kudos to Jack Perry. He made everything look great. Brian Danielson is fantastic. He took one of the best running knees I have seen. He ate oh, he that did. and died. Yeah. Um, mm. <laughs> you know, it was a nice match. And a lot of people are thinking, thinking, why is this the match? Why is this the match? Why, why are we doing this? as a Well, we got the answer, right? We saw what happened here. <sighs> After the match, Kill Switch comes out. <laughs> they tease that Christian is about to cash in on that contract. Christian comes there out was a cool, cool with the wings uh, moment there where where uh, kill shot or kill, kill switch. switch or kill, kill switch. I always talk about kill shot. Now it's on my brain. Kill switch looked at um, uh, Jack Perry and Jack Perry's like, "Are we really doing this again?" Because remember they had that big blow off you. They had a big blow off, but they were also <laughs> tag partners for a long time. I do like yeah. how Jack Perry is no longer Jungle Boy and Kill Switch is no longer Luchasaurus. It, it does show that they evolved them properly. Yeah, I, and I do like that a lot. I do like how they've evolved them into different people. So they come out. Christian comes out with uh, the Waynes, and as they're about to enter the ring, Moxley stops them. All of Blackpool Combat Club comes out to protect Danielson. They leave. They're celebrating in the ring. They hold up Danielson's hands. Everybody's happy. They give a big hug with Moxley. And out of nowhere, Claudio hits Danielson with an uppercut and hits that uppercut. And Danielson falls on his butt. And he's like, what the hell's going on? What are you doing? And you see. And he was smirking like, is this it? Is, are they like, turning on me? And are you turning up. on me? <laughs> and Moxley with the plastic bag, similar to what uh, Funk uh, did with Flair, right over Danielson's head. They're beating. They're, there's a beatdown happening. He's suffocating him. Crowd Yuta's chanting, being held is back. <laughs> Yuta's being held back. There was a this is murder chant. Yuta's being held back. He's crying. It felt like a sanctioned mob hit. Where one guy in the, the group didn't agree with it. He understood yeah. it, but he didn't agree with it. That's so where I got out of the that. The Blackpool Combat Club uh, is oh, done. We'll it's over. As we know it in that in that form. I don't you know, think I they're going to be called the Blackpool Combat else. Club anymore. No, they have to be called. We I mean, it. listen, it was called that because yeah. of William Regal. So, you know. I, I, and Marina Shafir is in the group, too. Marina's so in it, that. too, and maybe someone else. I'm still wondering what happened with Mox when he yelled at Tony Schiavone and said, this is not your company anymore. This is it. I think we're seeing it all play out now. Whose company is it? Mm-hmm. Well, apparently who, it's theirs now. Who who <laughs> authorized this hit on Danielson? You you really want it to be King. Who, I, <laughs> so I, Danielson's bad. last opponent in this company as a full time wrestler needs to be Shane McMahon. No. That needs <laughs> I'm gonna I'm going to uh I'm going to save the audience listening to this ready. What do you mean? 
What do you their, mean? Uh, phone no, radio, no, no. The uh, audience, the audience speaker. is all for this. You don't know anything. Can I teach you about professional <laughs> wrestling for a second? The audience, that's all they want to see. That's all I'm getting. I'm getting letters written to me from people in Portland. <laughs> People in Portland, people all over the country are nice writing letters. me handwritten letters saying, I want the final match to be Shane McMahon versus Brian Danielson for the AEW World Championship. That's what everybody wants. I can't help you. I can't help us people. I, he, he's a menace today. I'm telling you. No, no, no. Everybody agrees with that. Come on. We all know that. Uh, I'm very curious to see where this goes. I mean, listen, Mox and Mox would be a great final opponent for Danielson, and you could put the title on Mox, and he's a great ambassador for that title. He's a recognizable name, you know, going into this new TV deal. That was the final match. And then we got Hangman Page, Swerve Strickland, in a lights out steel cage match. So I rewatched this right before we went on the air because my initial feeling to this was this is a blood feud. This is the blow off. This is the final one. Hangman is so this, good. Yes. Swerve is so good. The the both of these guys have been married in this feud. And when you have guys that have the chemistry that they do, anything they do works. I will say this. This is not my style of wrestling. Okay? It never was. I know you think like, "Oh, Andrew, that's pretty funny. You got an ECW LED sign that you paid couple hundred bucks for yeah listen you see i was a teenager when that thing was going on i'm 40 years old now i like i like it very different style however this was a fantastic match and it made sense in the storytelling it made sense because they are hating they hate each other he set his freaking house on fire he broke into his house he bled in his mouth at the last show uh, the last match that they had, he hung Hangman. Remember that? He hung him. Yep. That's how he won the match. Right? That's how he won. And this all culminated right here. The match started with the cage still in the air. They were essentially trying to decapitate each other. There was a cinder block bump. Yeah. Two of them. Both of them bumped on the cinder block. There were... Uh, oh, staples that I, in them. That was the first cringe moment, by the, the way. When when he when Swerve bumped on that cinder block, I was like, "How is he? How is his back even working?" You know, they mm. took this to, you know, that last match that they had, that big one, that was pretty violent. This was ultra violent. This went to another level. Yes, totally different level. You know, they did the cinder block spots. Uh, the refs. So, at one point. The, the I, there, yeah. I the chair shots, you know, that that main one that that he took, you know, unprotected, you know, this, they flipped the camera. They switched it really quick. You could tell that the chair was loosened. I, I mean, they did it the right way. Right. And Hangman was hitting him with that chair. But you, did you notice how he was hitting him with the corner of the chair and kind of protecting it? Yes. Like holding the chair, mm -hmm. like all like holding it together because they knew it was going to collapse. Right. To pull the curtain back a little bit. So I don't. I, that wasn't the most. I mean, it looked nasty for sure, and that's the whole visual, right? Don't get hurt, but make it well, look I think the, terrible. I, I think the brutal part is what you're about to say next. <laughs> so Hangman, uh, you know, the Swerve is essentially he's done, right? He he's just on wobbled legs. He doesn't know where he is. You know, there he took his grill out, he, which I I took that as a sign they're stripping that character away. Like so they pulled. They took. They, they he took his grill out. And you could see, actually, he was kind of playing with it when he was on the ground. And I was like, oh, I thought he put, like, something in his mouth. But no, he was loose. I guess, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't have a grill. I've Popping never worn out, one. Right. I don't know how you lock it in or take it off. I have no idea. So, you know what? I should get a grill. How about that? <laughs> should I commission a grill? Totally go off the wall? And just speak about Shane McMahon returning? Uh, he got a hypodermic needle. And he jabbed it in his cheek while it's in I, his I, mouth. He hit him with the most brutal chair shot. And the ref called the show. Oh. Wild. This was, was this wild. was a wild ending. So a few notes from this. 
There were three matches where people bled, beginning, middle, and end. Actually, four. I four, forgot about four. the um, I forgot about uh, um, Briscoe. Proving. Yes, yeah, Briscoe was bled. There were four spots where there was blood. Renee was not involved in most of the post show. Uh, most of the post show said she was dealing with things. Is Renee going to be involved in this angle? When her best friends and her husband in a in a, in a feud, yeah, <laughs> where he where he uh, tried to ch uh, suffocate him. <laughs> Post show media call media uh, uh, scrum. Tony said he's ninety. There's a ninety percent chance AEW's rights deal is announced in the next month. Um, notice how he said so not. You know he he did he did say that it's not signed. Okay, I, I'm not going to say Tony is lying. But I'm not going to say he is lying. I'm not going to say he's lying. I'm not going to say he's not lying. I, I, I know, I know where this deal is at this point. And it's all very positive. If you go on my Twitter, you can see what I've written about it. You can see what I've responded to people about it. I'm not straying away by what I said. There's also a very significant element here, which we're going to talk about when we come back from the break, of a trademark, AEW Shockwave. And I, I, I think that is, a, that is going to be the interesting part of this new TV rights deal for this company between Warner Media and maybe someplace else. When we come back, I'll touch on this for a few minutes in our final segment. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Couple notes here. As I said, I am very, very confident that the AEW deal is finished. It is done. It is maybe signed, but not sealed and delivered <laughs> I, I listen here's the reality it's all it's done okay it's done the deal is done they need when when you announce something like this you need corporate synergy with your brand partners there may be one partner that it is not done with and, and i'm going to leave you with that cliffhanger with the shockwave stuff i have heard very interesting stuff about this i had a conversation with somebody that is in ad sales and um, we were talking about inventory, advertising inventory, and how it works. And, you know, there are networks that are very hungry for wrestling, especially networks that have had wrestling in the past that may not have it anymore. And when you build the relationship with your clients, you could actually see, like for Fox, for example, Fox, it, it, WWE was very successful, but the amount that they were paying WWE for SmackDown was not correlating with the ad rate that they had, and they couldn't get more. It's a very niche product, so you got to have enthusiastic advertisers to advertise. They had a lot of those, and that would be a waste of inventory if they can't pivot something with that, right? That would be a really waste of money. I think a lot of people see things like that. I I'm going to just leave you with that, okay? I'm going to leave you with that thought. However, uh. I, there was never any doubt that AEW would re-sign. Uh, and, and now we're here. I'm imagining they're going to, you know, get everything aligned with the network partners and announce it on that 500 show. The five-year anniversary, right? So we'll see. October 12th is the 500th show or the fifth-year anniversary, whatever. Uh, is it 500? No, it's fifth year. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm out of time. Wrestling Observer Live on Sports Byline. See you next week.